Let's talk about the greatest turnaround story in at least a generation. Let's talk about advanced micro devices. For years, AMD was basically an also ran semiconductor company. While Intel made the best processors and NVIDIA made the best graphics chips, AMD made cheaper, lower quality alternatives. They were the semiconductor equivalent of those knockoff store brand cereals, you know, the ones at the bottom shelf that come in a bag instead of a box. Needless to say, this was not a great business model, which is why AMD stock spent most of the last decade, a lost decade, trading in the very low single digits. Four years ago, the company was losing money and weighed down by debt with no real strategy to turn things around. So they brought in Dr. Lisa Su to take over as CEO, and she did the impossible. Not only did she turn AMD around, she turned it into arguably the best player in the space. She decided to invest heavily in making better chips, and it worked. Now AMD dominates the PC and the data center and the graphics markets, at least for new customers. They seem to be running circles around Intel. And that's how the stock has exploded higher from a buck and change three years ago to $10 in April to just above $30 today. The numbers here are absolutely incredible, and the future looks very bright as AMD continues to release terrific new products. But after this spectacular run, it's tripled in less than six months. we got to wonder if the stock can keep climbing. It's just overheating. Now, earlier today, we got a chance to talk to Lisa Su, the president and CEO of AMD, about what it is go- what's going on at this company I like to call her the miracle worker. Take a look. Lisa, you are a heroine to many people, in part because when you came in in October 2014, the stock was at three bucks. Now it's 10 times that. I don't care about today, tomorrow, the next day. I care about whether the turn is lasting and how it came about. Well, Jim, first of all, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, it's been an incredible you know, couple of years for us. You know, for us, it was really about, um, you know, AMD always had great technology assets, and it was really about how do we put those assets to work and really get the strategy and the execution right. And I truly believe you need both strategy and execution. Um, And so on the strategy side, it was really about choosing the right markets and knowing what we're really good at. And, you know, the most interesting thing today is, you know, high-performance computing is everywhere. You know, you need it in your PCs, you need it in gaming, you need it in the data center. And, you know, we're good at high-performance computing. We're one of the very few companies that are. Um, And then we really had to put together an execution engine. And so that's really been our focus over the last couple of years. Now, one of the things I think that uh, has been mystifying Wall Street, but not our viewers, which are Main Street, Wall Street says there's no way that Intel can do poorly and AMD do well for a long time. But the fact is, is that this is a very big market. There's room for both. You know, the the thing that people need to understand is, you know, our market, when we say high performance computing, it's a $75 billion TAM, $75 billion. And you need all kinds of computing. And so, you know, our belief is, you know, we put out great products, we work deeply with our customers, and we're going to provide value to consumers and enterprises um, all over. And so, yeah, we think this is a huge market and um, there's opportunities for a lot of people. High performance when it comes to the PC, high performance when it comes to gaming, high performance when it comes to data center. How did you get that to happen? You know, when you look at these markets, you know, you really see that people need more computing horsepower. I mean, just think about gaming these days. I mean, double digit growth, right? Whether you're talking about game consoles, or you're talking about PC gaming, or you're talking about cloud gaming, all of these markets like um, higher computing power. And that's a great place for us to be. Now, there would be a time where I felt and did feel when you were in the single digits that AMD didn't have the balance sheet to take on Intel, didn't have the balance sheet to take on NVIDIA. You fixed that first. That was tactical, and then you got strategic. You know, we needed to do all of these things, right? Certainly the balance sheet was critical. You know, we decided to make the right investments. And, you know, technology is all about making the right choices. So where are we going to invest? Where are we not going to invest? Um, You know, at that time, three or four years ago, you know, it was, you know, mobile phones and tablets and um, IoT that were the sexy things. And we were like, hey, we know that those are good markets, but those are not AMD. And we focused on what we thought the future would would hold for us. And it turns out those turned out to be a lot more commodity. You went proprietary. Proprietary had a higher valuation. That's why I think your stock can go up over long term. Now, I know we're not talking about 29 versus 32, but the decision to go proprietary is secular, not cyclical. That's right. I think the key is we got to provide value to our customers. You know, highly differentiated products, 
products that span a lot of different applications and use cases. And you know, really, we have to stay at the bleeding edge, right? That's what makes you know sort of high performance computing exciting. Is we need to keep pushing the envelope on our technology. All right, bleeding edge, AMD. Didn't think that it could happen. Here's what people ask me, though. They don't want to know about Ryzen, and the Ryzen chips are amazing. They don't want to know about <laughs> Ryzen's how Ryzen's done pretty well. Yes, though. they have. Okay. They turn all the major PC companies for the first time. Yes. You know what they ask me? Mm. Who is Lisa Su? <laughs> Who is Lisa Su? Look, I am an engineer. I grew up as an engineer. I love In technology. New York. In New York, I love technology. Um, you know, I really think that the interesting thing about semiconductors, Jim, is look, we're making decisions now that you won't see the outcome for three, four, or five right. years. And so look, we've made some good decisions. I mean, we made some good decisions on architecture. Uh, we made some good decisions on manufacturing process technology. You know, we're moving to um, the latest and greatest process technology, right. seven nanometer. And um, I love seeing that. I love the fact that, you know, we're, we're trying to project the future. And, uh, you know, hopefully we make some good decisions. Now, you have benefited from a slip in manufacturing at Intel. If Intel catches up, will you be able to go again, go forward again, or can they actually get to par with you? You know, we never count on our competition not doing well, all right? The competition is very, very strong. What we look at is there are some fundamental changes in the marketplace. Um, Moore's law is changing. You know, right. it's not the same that manufacturing technology is progressing at the same pace. Um, we've decided to pick you know, really good architectural decisions um, in terms of how we put our server chips together. And uh, we're also partnering with leading edge manufacturing at uh, TSMC. And so we believe, you know, you know, independent of what the competition can do, right. we know that we can keep our architecture going. And frankly, when we started, you know, we call our um, CPU architecture Zen. You know, we had a Zen 1, Zen 2, Zen 3. We're not talking about Zen 4 and Zen 5. And so it's, it's a very strong roadmap that I'm very excited about. At the same time, you're cognizant about what's going on in trade with China. You have done very well. You have a joint venture with China. Uh, amount of fret that you have about that? Well, you know, we all need to be cognizant of what's happening in the market around trade in China. And, um, you know, certainly some of the tariffs add a bit of complexity. Uh, to um, to our customers and to us, but we have a lot of manufacturing partners throughout the world, and so we're, we're, we'll work through it. And we very much, you know, want to keep our focus on leading edge technology. Okay, when I met you, the stock was uh, high single digits, low double digits, and you said to me, "I shouldn't fall in love necessarily with Nvidia." How's that <laughs> rivalry going? You know, look, like I said, competition is good. Competition is good for everybody. Um, no question that uh, there's a, a lot of need for GPUs in the marketplace. Frankly, GPUs is a great market. And I've, I, I've always said that there could be you know, multiple winners in this market. So we are very, very focused on GPUs, um, graphics, both for right. gaming as well as for computing applications. And I think we're going to grow in this market. This is forward. amazing. I remember Wintel. Now I should be thinking about when AMD, you are Microsoft's partner. You know, we very, very much appreciate um, our partnership with all of our key customers. Right. You know, Microsoft is a leader, uh, certainly in Windows. We're partnered with them in game consoles. I think we have a vision of where cloud computing is going and we're working closely with them. But, you know, we also view part of our strength is that we can work with um, all customers in terms of, you know, cloud customers as well as PC customers, and we can differentiate for each one of them. I think that's what makes us unique is you know we're working with both Sony and Microsoft on consoles and they both have their specific you know secret sauce that we're helping them do so okay. one last question uh, do you ever sleep i've emailed you at every <laughs> single hour you come back within 1 minute I love what I'm doing. And so at the end of the day, I don't think you sleep either, by the way. So we're But both, I'm not uh, CEO of AMD. <laughs> we have plenty of fun. And, you know, the one thing I'd like to say, though, Jim, is this is really just the beginning. I mean, we have a ton of work to do, um, but it's a great place to be. You know, we're, we're in a great markets, and we just really have to, uh, you know, focus on the uh, market opportunity and execute. Your humility is uh, stark, but I will say this. I've followed AMD since the 80s. This is the best it's ever been. I never thought AMD would get to this point. Your strategy, your tactics, your execution, remarkable. Thank you very much, Jim. It's Dr. Lisa Su. She's AMD's president and CEO. Congratulations Thank on all you. you've done. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.